So but before we get started with the entire course, let's take a look at what a team actually could accomplish uh, at the end of this process. Now imagine you had 10 weeks or months or a year to go do this. Um, you'd actually be able to do a lot. But what if we gave you five days? I want to give you an example of a team from one of our classes uh, that decided they were going to provide a rental service for professional sports jerseys. And in five days, five days, they personally got out of the building and spoke to 169 customers and had 190 people come to their website and actually sold two things during the class. Let's take a look at what their business model canvas started with and evolved to. So on day one, these were their initial hypotheses coming into the class. They thought that their customer segments was going to be professional sports game attendees who were going to be male, adult, less than $100,000 income, and attend 10 games per year. That is, they were beginning with a series of hypotheses about their customer archetype. And they thought their value proposition was going to provide a cheaper way to officially license sports jerseys to a game, eliminate the risk of owning a player whose jersey is traded, and to provide alternatives to purchasing counterfeit jerseys. And their sales channel was going to be websites or stadium shops or ticket websites or direct mail. And how they were going to create demand was through search ads, social media, stadium promotions. And their revenue stream was going to be through an annual subscription model. And on the left-hand side, kind of the backstage of the business model canvas, their activities were going to be rental tracking, shipping, dry cleaning, marketing, customer service. And they were going to have to have as resources inventory of jerseys, warehouses, logistics systems, and their key partners might be the professional sports league and the suppliers and the dry cleaners and the shop vendors and envelope suppliers and UPS and FedEx and the postal service. And their cost structure was going to be for warehousing, shipping, cleaning, logistics, tracking, website development and maintenance. And this sounds particularly reasonable. You would look at this and go, absolutely, why do I even need to be in this class? But they got out of the building and spoke to 60 people, 60 people, by going to Yankee Stadium and actually meeting a bunch of customers on the first day. And look what happened. They realized that actually women wore sports jerseys as well. And there was no way you could have convinced them of that until they stood in front of the customers at Yankee Stadium and said, hey, it's a 50-50 split. And that it was actually young adults, 18 to 30, and they actually were casual sports fans. And now they started to get a better understanding of what customer relationships were, about getting customers, keeping them, and growing them. And they realized that people would maybe also be interested in a pay per rental model as well as an annual subscription. Next, they got out of the building again. And now they started expanding who their customer segment was, and they actually split the segment into two. They realized there were two different archetypes. Sports jersey owners who were male, 13 to 35, but there was also another archetype, which were people who attended a single game. And they were male and female, 18 to 30, and they were casual fans. And so now they actually were able to take their revenue stream and match it to their archetype. So for sports jersey owners, an annual subscription made sense. But for single game attendees, pay per rental made sense. And their value prop differed for, again, those two different archetypes. As you'll see later, what we need is every time we have a unique archetype, we need at minimum a matching value proposition and a matching revenue model for each archetype. The fourth day, they learned some more things. Most importantly, they learned how much would some of those sports jersey owners actually pay in an annual subscription. They actually started asking some serious solid numbers. And the answer they got back was $200. And they also understood that social media would be a big component in customer acquisition. The next day, they learned some more. They actually learned that another alternative for sports jersey owners would be a monthly subscription and also a one-time rental. And they started thinking about how would you keep those customers? That is, how would you eliminate churn and increase loyalty? And they started to think about seniority loyalty programs and how they would grow those customers by cross-selling and upselling them with premium uh, subscriptions and family plans. So you could see after five days, just five days, after talking to 160 customers, you could see how the business model evolved dramatically 
from something that looked like this on day one to something that looked like this on day five. Day one, a series of untested hypotheses, a faith-based enterprise. On day five, the faith has turned into facts. And this startup is on the road to actually building something that customers might want. So in the rest of these lectures, we're going to take you through each one of the business model components and hoping you'll get out of the building just like this team to test each one of your hypotheses.